This photo made an appearance in one of my most recent YouTube videos, and I had a bunch of people ask me about the edit that went into it, and by a bunch, I mean two. So I decided to make a video centered around this one photo, walk you through the edit, and show you just some of the things on site that went into setting up this one shot. Plus, you might be surprised how simple and easy this edit is. So let's jump to the iPad and I'll show you just kind of from a different perspective. Here's a shot from the living room. Obviously we're facing the kitchen, but a completely different direction than uh, the shot that you saw in the thumbnail and at the beginning of this video. Realistically, if I remember right, I think the camera was set up somewhere here on the tripod, obviously facing that direction. So in this photo, I really wanted to emphasize the, the drama of the space as much as possible. So, um, and I wanted to do that via this window right here. I wanted to showcase and really dramatize the light that was coming this direction. And as you're probably able to tell, there's also another large window here on this side of the living room. And clearly the, the light from the living area, there's a lot of it coming from that direction, but I was perfectly fine leaving those blinds and those shades open because it's coming from the same direction as uh, this, this kitchen window over here. But the light that I did want to cancel out was the light coming from kind of this dining area over here. Now it, it goes without saying, but obviously the, the wall here is, is blocking off a lot of that light, but this open door space, whatever you want to call it, this walkway between the dining room and the kitchen, it's letting a lot of that light in, which is why, as you might be able to, to already see, it's why I had my reflector out to, I was going to use the, the the dark side of it and flag the light that was coming. It, this is one of those weird windows where the blinds were only blocking half. So everything, you know, below there was, was perfectly fine, but for some reason those Blinds only covered half, so myself and uh, the marketing rep for the company I was shooting for had to help me out. So as we set up the camera on a timer and was uh, connected to the camera over the, the iPad, we had to hold it up and block out the light that was peeking out from uh, above the shades. Before we jump into Lightroom though, I wanna show you something with the images straight out of camera. So this is the shot before we blocked the light coming from the dining room area, and this is afterwards. Now there was a comment recently on one of my other YouTube videos where someone asked, why do you do that? Why do you find it necessary to block out uh, the light. Why is it uh, necessary to do this? Here's the thing. It's not. It's not necessary. This is just to taste. This is really to each photographer's personal preference. I enjoy the, the mood and drama of shadows and highlights, and I really want to emphasize light just coming from one direction as it rakes across different elements within the shot. And much like I showed you from that other perspective, I just, in this shot, I just really wanted to emphasize light coming from one direction of the house. Yeah, there are some photographers who would be perfectly fine with, with this image, and honestly, there's nothing wrong with it. I still think the photo looks great. This all really just comes down to a photographer's personal taste. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to if or when to add or block light in a certain scene. Okay, so we are in Lightroom and I want you to notice something. This is based on feedback I got on my video talking about white walls, how people are really, a lot of photographers are clamoring to get that white, crisp, clean look. This is a straight out of camera image. There was no light added. Clearly, as I've mentioned, we blocked light coming from one side of the house, again, straight out of camera. My point is, is that when it comes to getting that crisp white look, a lot of it is just done on site. There's really not a magic wand or, or trick you can do to, to get that look when there really isn't any basis in the image itself straight out of camera. At the very least, you have to start with an image relatively close to it or create it yourself using supplemental flash lighting on site. But let's go through the edit. So first thing that I'm gonna do is Double check the white balance here. It, my gut tells me, just based on the way this looks, this is probably a bit on the cold side. It says we're at 4,821 on the tint. I'm just gonna tap around different areas of the room. So yeah, it warmed it up just a bit, but it did take away some of the tint, I think. So we're at 4,917. I'm gonna just try it at different parts of the room and see the feedback I get. See, now that's even warmer. It's at 5,100. Over here, that says 5100, 4950. The tint seems to be hovering around 17 to 
20. So what I'm gonna do just is kind of average it out. I I'm gonna put the temperature at an even 5,000 and put the tint, let's put it somewhere in between 18. You're gonna get some variance, but we're gonna kind of take care of that a little bit in post and Photoshop. So uh, uh, my general rule of thumb, uh, I, I don't add a bunch of contrast. I might add five. <laughs> Highlights and shit. Well, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's jump over to the lens correction. I don't wanna do too much without doing that first. See, by doing that, it will also brighten up the image as well because the, the lens, I think, adds a bit of a vignette and Lightroom's uh, correcting that. So now the, the image overall is brightened. And I think, for my taste, just the way it looks, it's a bit on the bright side. Clearly the windows are blown out. We're gonna correct that a little bit here in post, or in uh, Photoshop, excuse me. The other thing I definitely wanna do is to correct the vertical. So just so I can see clearer what I'm doing, I'm gonna take the exposure down just a tad. Go back here to the transform side. And I have said this before, I, I may have mentioned it twice now at this point. If you're shooting a kitchen and you need something to reference for verticals, definitely go with the lines in the cabinetry because I have seen cabinetry installed time and time again. And for the most part, cabinetry installation companies are meticulous about making sure things are level and straight. So we're gonna create a line here based on the edge of the cabinetry. Looks good there. Let's go off of this one. All right, there we go. Perfect, so we have a straight and vertical shot. Okay, now let's mess with the highlights and shadows. Uh, I'm gonna take, I don't wanna kill the highlights too much. I'm only gonna take it down to maybe negative 40. Shadows, I don't think I'm losing a whole lot in shadow. I'm only gonna bump that up maybe 30. Yeah, see that, uh, that's even a little bit too much for my taste. I'm gonna say 20. I'm gonna add some clarity that, and I'm gonna do this first. I'm gonna say 20, so that'll bring some of that contrasty look in. And because this photo is so white, I really want to emphasize the color that's in there. And you might think this is overdoing it, but I'm gonna bump up the vibrance and saturation to 12. You might not agree with that, and if you don't, I completely understand. This is just to, to my taste. I want that color to still remain in there because in my opinion, if I leave the saturation or barely bump it up, it's just overall, it's gonna look a little too lifeless and sterile. Now I'm going to go back, check the whites and the blacks and make sure I'm not losing too much in the highlights. See, I'm the, I am there in the windows, which is fine. I was expecting that. I'm only gonna take that down, let's say negative 10. And then the blacks were teetering on getting some. Uh, again, I'm only gonna take that to about negative 10. We're getting some of that within the shadows of the the chairs here. I've started bumping up texture and dehaze just a tad um, over the past few months just to add, a, 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 well, like it says, a little bit of texture, especially when there's things like wood grain or textures within wallpaper, things like that, I'm adding that. And then dehaze just adds a different type of contrast in it. I mean, if you, if you go overboard with it, it starts to look terrible, it looks awful. But again, I'm just gonna leave that at five. I think that's good as is. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna copy all the settings that I did to this exposure and then I'm gonna paste them on this darker exposure here. And I'm going to use this exposure to, in a way, tone down the part that's a little bit blown out on this exposure that's looking borderline nuclear. I just wanna gradually add this exposure to kind of level things out a bit. But as this exposure looks, it's a little bit too dark for my taste. Let's go over here to the, the whites and the blacks. See, right now there is hardly any information missing from the windows. And that looks a little bit too fake for my taste. I'm gonna double check from the histogram where I am here. So <laughs> this is my elementary way of checking the histogram. The peak is pretty much right below the T. So clearly I don't need to be that high from here uh, for, with this exposure, but I'm gonna bump this up. See, that's about where it is on the other exposure. And I'm gonna tone this down about like that. And I will kill the highlights maybe a little bit more. To explain a little bit, yes, I want to tone down this really overexposed kind of nuclear looking area, but I don't want 
the difference to be night and day. I just want it to be a subtle toning of the highlights in the, in the final image, really. I think that should be good. Okay, so I will select both and we will now send these over to Photoshop. Now I have the darker exposure here on top. I am not going to do anything really fancy. I'm just going to hide that layer with a mask, take a brush, and I'm gonna make it a really soft brush and barely paint in some of that. Wow, that's 100%, let's go back. <laughs> let's, take the, uh, let's take the opacity down to 20. Let's be a little bit more subtle with this. And we're getting a bit of overexposure here, and I think this is kind of a mudroom back here. And I think that's about it. I think that's about all I need to do. Yeah, so there's nothing amazing on the other side of this glass. Yeah, there's a, there's a decent backyard, but there's not an amazing lake view or absolutely gorgeous buildings or houses on the other side of this glass. So that's why I'm leaving it like that. I'm perfectly fine keeping the image with blown out windows. But yeah, looking at the on and off, I think that still looks pretty natural without it looking like a goofy HDR pick. And I'm gonna merge that together. And now we're gonna clean up this image a bit. Let's really make sure our, our whites, the, the white cabinetry, the countertops and everything, the white tile really looks crisp and bright. And the, in order to do that, we're just going to remove any, I've called them before kind of rogue colors which are typically the magentas, blues, cyans, and greens. And let's find out how much of those colors are carrying over into areas where they shouldn't be. The magentas, there's barely anything peaking here, but since it's barely there, it's hardly gonna make a difference if I take it down almost all the way. Let's go to the blues. I'm gonna guess there's probably gonna be a good amount of blue, and there is. So as you can see, there's some on the cabinetry here. There's some appearing in the mudroom. There's some on the cabinetry above the stove, some here on the left side, upper left side. And clearly because the island itself is blue, there's, there's gonna be a ton of blue there. But I'm still going to desaturate this all the way down to about negative 70. Cyan's, yeah, still a good amount there appearing around the windows and cabinetry. I'm gonna take that down about negative 70 and then greens. Yeah, wow, there's a there's more than I thought would be there. We're gonna take that down, it's about negative 70, but I'm not gonna leave that as is. I'm gonna zoom back in to the places where I want it to come back. I don't want this overall desaturated looking photo. Okay, that should be good. Now, the other thing I do is I add another hue saturation layer, and this one is specific to just the yellows. Yellows is another kind of rogue color tone that can be kind of a nuisance, especially when you are trying to make your white areas look crisp and white. Here's the problem though, is when it comes to the yellows, if you bump that up, yeah, see, we are getting some yellows here in the cabinetry, but there is a ton of yellow that should be in other areas. Obviously the chairs, but the wood floor as well, the knobs, places like that. So this is where I start to decide, should I, what type of mask should I use? Should I use a mask where I have to reveal the yellow or the other way around? And I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna desaturate the whole scene. No, no, no. I'm gonna desaturate it a bit. I'm gonna take it down to about negative 15, make it really subtle, and then we are going to do the tedious job of painting that yellow, those yellow tones back in where they should be. And clearly, I'm gonna fast forward through this. And side note, you can be a little quick and dirty with the brush here. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm not going through all these areas with like a pen tool per se. Uh, the main reason is that that removal of the yellows, it's it's very subtle. My, in my opinion, I think if you remove the yellows completely, it, it's going to start to make the overall image look a little bleak and sterile. And some people might argue that because everything is very white and bright, it might already look that way, but I don't want it to, I don't want it to look fake. I see a lot of photographers do this where 
the, in, in this instance, they will just overly desaturate and make the whites look absolutely perfectly white. And I've mentioned it before in another video, the human eye doesn't even perceive things that way. So I don't think a photo should be. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see how much of a difference it made. Negligible. <laughs> Barely any difference, but I still, I don't think I took care of it in the plants. Yeah, when you're removing yellows, make sure to double check the things that are green because there's still typically a, a good amount of yellow that's in there. It's just one of those steps that overall, it's bit by bit, we're gonna help make this image look better and give it that crisp, clean, bright and airy feel. Next up is something that I started doing roughly about a year or so ago, and it's taking care of the reflections here in the um, in the wood floors. I'm just gonna sample kind of a, a the, the tan coloring here. I'm gonna change this OL well, for the time being. I'm gonna leave this as normal. I'm gonna harden the brush edges just a bit, and I'm gonna do a real, really, really rough paint job on where that reflection is appearing in the wood floor here. So you're probably looking at this and going, what in the world are you doing? Uh, let's change the blend mode of this to color. Now you might look at this and go, oh, I see what you did and leave it right there. It, and that's fine, but it still looks a little unnatural to my taste. And the reason I'm adding this is just to subtly bring back that color to where the reflection kind of uh, kind of removed it. Okay, we are good. Before and after. See, it just adds a little bit of color back into those reflections, but not enough. See, if, if I left this at 100%, yeah, see, it just, it looks fake. It looks fake if I leave it at that. In fact, now that I'm looking at that, I'm gonna take it down to about 30. For the most part, I would say that image is done but I'm gonna add a couple things here, just in, in my process, just a little bit of a cherry on top. I'm gonna go to Filter and go over to Color Effects Pro. And this is gonna add a, some subtle contrast to the image, but then also add a little bit more um, detail into it as well. Now, I like what Color Effects Pro does. It's a little bit too heavy, and I mean, it's based on my settings, but it's a, it's a little too heavy on adding the detail. So I'm gonna take the opacity of this layer down to maybe about 60%. Do a before and after. And the other, th the odd thing is the side effect that it does, it, it says it adds contrast, but I think it's really fine type of contrast overall. In my opinion, I think it kind of flattens the image. So what I'm gonna do is bring some of that back and I'm at a curves layer. I'm gonna keep the highlights where they're at and leave that there, but really bump up these mid-tones and then grab some of the shadows and bring those back down. And this other thing that I started doing too is grabbing the bottom portion of the curve and adding, bumping it up to about seven or eight. I think it almost gives it kind of this film type of look. I don't know, it's really, really subtle, but just kind of this additional step I started doing. Let's merge that together and that's about it. So let's kind of take a peek for and after and see what this looks like. Not too bad. Now, the, the funny thing is, yeah, some people are going to watch this video. If you watch all the way to the end, first off, thank you. But you might look at this and look at the before and after and go, I hardly see any difference. And yeah, that's true. But like I mentioned before, the straight out of camera shot, setting stuff up, blocking light a certain way, make, you know, checking all these things on site, that probably does about 80 to 90% of the work for us. When, you, when your straight out of camera image looks that great, your edit is really only going to fine tune it. it. It's not going to be this drastic change and drastic night and day 
look from straight out of camera to edit. It, it should be subtle, but it should give it this nice, refined, professional look. Well, that will do it for this video. Not every single edit has to be long, drawn out, and complicated. Sometimes when you get a great photo straight out of camera, the editing is quite minimal. If you got anything out of this video, make sure to drop me one of these. If you have questions about my editing process as it relates to, to this image, Feel free to leave it in the comments below. I will try my best to, to answer those and to get to those as quickly as I can. If you've watched all the way here to the end, I sincerely appreciate it. I appreciate you taking the time to watch the video at all. That will do it for now, and we'll see you on the next one.